So I've been given the topic, patriotism and nation building to discuss. And I believe my mentor has done all the necessary, necessary introductions. So I'm just going to move straight to, to the topic. So I've, such, I've structured my slides into two sections. First, the topic I've been given also contains two parts, the patriotism part and the nation building part. So we are, um, we are going to be looking at patriotism first. After that, we are going to move to nation building. Then we tend to, we'll try to see if there, there's any correlation between the two things. To begin with, the first section of my study is going to be talking about patriotism. And we are going to ask ourselves and discuss amongst ourselves what patriotism means. At every, usually, as a presentation proceeds, I would most likely push forward some questions to us to get our feedback and how to see if you are following and to understand and to see if you actually don't understand the content of the slide. Now, <clears throat> patriotism, what is patriotism? To answer this, I've divided patriotism into two stages, the understanding stage and the application stage. That means to be patriotic, one has to know what patriotism, what patriotism is. Then after knowing, then one, one must be able to apply that knowledge. Under the two categories, we have four steps and three steps. So the first step contains the point which is to understand the difference between patriotism and nationalism. Then we have to learn the application of patriotism. We have to learn about our country and we have to learn about other countries. Then what about being patriotic? This way you have to be informed. You have to update yourself. You have to be interested in politics and you have to be open with your affection towards the country. So um, we have to understand the difference between the two times first. So, what is the difference? We have to understand the difference between patriotism and nationalism. The difference is patriotism is a feeling and expression of love, devotion, and attachment towards one's country, along with the feeling of unity with those who share those feelings. That means if you, as an individual, you you are you have an expression of love, you. You are devoted to your country and you have this feeling of attachment towards the country. And at the same time, you notice know, like the other individuals who share the same feeling, then that particular feeling is called patriotism. How does that differ from nationalism? Well, nationalism is a strong attachment and identification towards those country, which is not bad until and supports the interest. But then the problem is for nationalism, you're always showing those interests to the exclusion or to the detriment of the of other nations. That means there's always this belief of superiority in nationalism as opposed to patriotism, where everyone is viewed as equal. So in, in nationalism, the belief is that my race, my country, my tribe, whatever, um, whatever identity it is that I'm claiming to be, then the belief is that this identity is actually superior, supersedes every other identity. So being Nigerian, I'm better than someone who is Ghanaian. Being Nigerian would look better than an American or maybe an Arab or maybe another person from another continent. So these are the two differences. This is the fundamental difference between patriotism and nationalism. And it is on these differences that we're going to actually set, we're going to explain every other time that comes after this. So after understanding the difference between the two terms, you must be able to, be able to apply what you, have, what you have understood. And how do you do that? Patriotism is one of the most common beliefs manipulated in propaganda. Patriots are always aware of the intentions of the messages they hear and the potential impact of the actions. Just can I be excused for a second, sir? Okay, no problem. Please let the um, um, I'm very sorry, I'm back. Please, you are welcome. All right, thank you very much. So, because one of the most common beliefs is manipulated in propaganda, and what does that mean? It is actually quite common for people to share propaganda under the guise of patriotism. There is always some sort of indications to activities that they advertise as patriotic 
but actually they are not patriotic activities. They are, in fact, unpatriotic or nationalist activities. For instance, Okay, so um, because we're in Nigeria, I'm going to actually base most of my instances on this country. So for instance, it is quite common for, uh, okay, let's say in the case of Sunday Gowona, I'm sorry, I just had to bring that up. He advertises his own belief. He tells people to join his cause and they want to establish a urban nation. To the people he's advertising to, they might think that, okay, we are actually being patriotic. We are patriot of whatever nation it is that they claim to, to espouse. We are urban citizens. But then that is just propaganda for something that is actually unpatriotic to Nigeria as a nation itself. So patriotism is... Um, so it is actually one of the most common beliefs that they manipulate in propaganda. And due to that, patriots must be always aware of the intensity of the messages they hear and the potential impact of their actions. That means once an individual hears a message, being patriotic is to actually understand the, the intentions behind those messages. What, the, like, what is the primary purpose of this message? What does this person actually want from me? And then they have to understand the impact of the actions. That means if they eventually accept that message, whatever they do, they must know if I decide to join the world on this mission now, whatever action it is that I'm going to engage in, I must understand the consequences. So how, do, how, um, how does one actually discern between messages that are propaganda and messages that are actually for the, for the good of the country or the nation? The trust level is not determined by someone's conformity to what propaganda gets circulated by truth. But I'm still going to base my example on the world's case. Now imagine someone joins, someone joins the world in this case, and the, for one reason or the other, participate in whatever activities they do. That person, I want to believe that is actually ascending and the level of patriotism when in fact is engaging activities that do really undermine the existence of his own original country, right? Which is, in that case, would be unpatriotic or even nationalist. If they are trying to force, if they are trying to force people into buying into their values, they are trying to force their own beliefs upon other people. On this, I would like to give another instance that I believe is more general and we can more relate to it. Um, Adolf Hitler is actually quite common for starting World War II. So when he came up with this idea, he preached to the people and he told them, he invited them to a patriotic cause. And what was this cause? He wanted Germany to take over, to rule the world, right? If there are actually people who bought into that idea and which ones or other, they engage in whatever atrocities it is that he wanted them to engage in, they might believe that they are ascending in in a patriotic level, right? Okay, now maybe there are the base, then they got to a particular level and however high they are seen. But actually that is that is just propaganda. It is not the truth at all. And your, your patriotic level, your patriotic level does not actually conform to whatever propaganda is, is propagated or also gets circulated by truth. And how does one actually avoid nationalism? The first thing is to learn about your country. Yeah, it says a country just explains how it came to be and more struggles that country's founding fathers faced on their way to establish a united nation for all those who share their background. Um, in a perfect instance of this would be Nigeria's founding fathers. We have Bafin Awolowo, Nandam Jazuku, Tafa Balewa, a lot of them like that. They came together and they thought we share a common identity. We identify as Nigerians. We shouldn't continue to let these people, these white people, rule us. And they stood up, they approached our colonial masters and they sought independence, they protest independence from them. And after a while, they were granted. So learning about their history, looking at what challenges they had to go to, can actually can instill feelings of values of patriotism in one. Because it also qualifies the challenges the country has faced thus far and how this were overcome. This would help us to avoid history from repeating itself. In the 1967 to 1970, Nigeria faced a civil war. We had secessionist group, people that felt that their own rights were being undermined in the country and they wanted to, to be separated. I believe something similar is still happening now because we still have the IPOB. If we if Nigeria fails to learn from the history of that time, 
then chances are we are going to actually repeat the mistake of that time. We are still going to kill millions of people and all. So learning about history is actually a very, very important tool to help prevent occurrences of the past, right? And it's also a way to see, like to develop your own your level of protection as a person. Because you tend to understand the challenges your country has faced and you look at ways that it overcame those challenges. Then if challenges of similar nature were to surface, then you would actually know how to approach them. Secondly, the constitutional symbols such as past leaders, flag, coat of arms, the national anthem and pledge, and other famous landmarks. All of these from all of these um, items, symbols, they contain interesting facts on what values the country is established upon. Learning about these values, one can actually incorporate them into his own personal self to, to become better, to develop his level of patriotism. So Nigerian flag contains green, white, and green, right? Or maybe let's take Nigerian coat of arms. Well, um, the green on Nigerian flag represents fertility, right? The white represents peace. If uh, if Nigeria knows that Nigeria wants to embody peace, it can actually try to inculcate that habit of peace in the zone of two. So it tends to relate to people peacefully. It tends to do things that actually align with his own, with the country's values, with the country's qualities. And that way is actually going to be improving patriotism. Still about learning about your country. You can read about your country. You can read the country's constitution to understand your rights over the nation and the nation's rights over you. Every country has rights over the citizen. At the same time, you as a citizen, you have things that you are, support you deserve from Nigeria as a country. So you have to understand these things to, to understand how to, to do things that do not actually, um, I'm sorry, to, to ensure that you're not doing things that actually contradict, yes, this, this right and these right. values. So for example, according to the Nigeria's constitution, there are 12 fundamental human rights, and I've listed them here. So any activity by an individual that aims to undermine this right will be construed as unpatriotic. Um, I would like to, I would like to bring an example of your answers. I think that one is also an example of um, a course that, that later became propaganda. So people were advertising that they want this, they want that, they want this, they want that. Then due to, after a while, they started to infringe on people's rights. For instance, they started to infringe on the right to freedom of movement of some people. In that case, you have, you have undermined someone's right, and that is a non protected activity. And whatever it is that you are told at that point, whatever it is that whatever it is that is sitting you told you that you're actually been a very pathetic citizen of Nigeria demanding for your rights. What about the rest of the people that deserves to move? So that's that's these are the things we have to actually be on that we have to be careful about, we have to be wary of. So we will not fall into the pit of unpatriotism, right? Okay, did you know this John is just like um, a fun fact that the president of Nigeria is allowed to deprive a Nigerian citizen his or her citizenship. If court records and proceedings show that the person has shown himself by act or speech to be disloyal towards the federal republic of Nigeria, still based up, uh, still based on the previous point that any activity by any individual that aims to undermine the right of any individual, any Nigerian, will be construed as unpatriotic. So at that point, if you actually were caught and caught and, and investigations and research findings actually do show that you engage in certain activities and acts that that tend to undermine the existence of Nigeria as a country. The president is actually allowed to deprive you of your citizenship, to strip you of your citizenship, right? Because you are actually a threat. You can, you are a threat to Nigeria's existence as a country. This actually in, is, is in the constitution of, of Nigeria, yes. And I believe it's something you have to, to, to know to prevent us from falling into this kind of errors. So another important part is to learn about other countries. Yes, yeah, so understanding how other countries came to be can also help prevent the feeling of nationalism from developing. If wanting to, if you understand your own country, that's okay, that is actually very admirable, right? You understand where your country is coming from, you understand this issue, you understand this value, so you tend to uphold them. But then learning about other countries also will also give you insights about how they came to be, the things they have faced, and the challenges they have also faced. So once you understand these two parts, you can actually find parallels between them and you tend to respect them for who they are. That way you would not feel obliged to, or you would not develop any feelings of superiority over the other person because you, you believe like every human being is equal. You tend to share this feeling of equality and you tend to relate to them as such. Now, being patriotic, this is the first part. You have to stay informed. Yes, yeah, we say any country is constantly going through series of issues. Patriotism is being aware of these problems and constantly thinking of creative solutions that help solve these problems. 
you have to know as any citizen of any country that regardless of the situations, problems will always arise, regardless of where you are. Then would, would you continue to run away from them? I guess this would address the culture of Jack Ma that is actually quite common in our society today. Everyone wants to leave Nigeria to go to where they believe the grass is greener, right? Actually, that is not bad. But the problem is where you are going to actually, they're also going through a series of issues. They also are facing their own challenges. And it will be the duty of some people to think, to come up with solutions to these challenges so that the, the country is of the nation can overcome these challenges. Nigeria is actually not different. Any country at any point will always face a series of issues. Then as a patriot, you have to be aware of these problems, then collaborate with people, try to think of solutions that you can uh, that you can give this issue so the country can actually progress, can move forward. If we all leave the country, then whose duty would it be to actually find solutions to problems we are facing? Whose duty would it be to develop our country? So that's just things we have to realize. Next. Protection will also involve having interest in foreign policy. Our one's country relates to every other country in the world and knowing what role the country plays on the global scale. This helps contribute to develop the global economy without displacing the patriotic feelings. Beyond, besides knowing what role, besides knowing about the constitution of the country, it's also very good to learn about international politics, learn about how Nigeria contributes to national development is quite important. Once you understand that, you will, you'll be able to contribute to the development of the global economy. That means you are contributing to a global cause. You are contributing on the global scale. But at the same time, you are still retaining your identity as an Nigerian. So the benefit would be a Nigerian country, a Nigerian did this, a Nigerian found out about it, a Nigerian discovered this. You are still a Nigerian, but you are contributing to something that can help develop the entire world. And that, that is the picture of it. So and these are all productive acts, productive activities, productive values that, that we should all upload as, as citizens. And finally, um, you have to be, okay, yes, second to the last, I mean, you have to be interested in politics. Political party is a lack of interest or political engagement by the citizens of the country. It can lead to a democratic decline and regression of the state in various ways. It can lead to diminished capacity of the state, it can lead to uh, the kind of democracy, right? I already said that. So as Nigerians, it is actually, as an Nigerian, it's very important to be interested in politics. You, should, you have to engage your government. You have to ask them questions. You have to, if possible, contest for positions, right? This is actually quite important. If you don't do that, then there's going to be a continuous decline in, in representative democracy, where we have just the same sort of people representing, leading at the top, making all of the laws, um, from the of the policies, and we are the receiving end here, we, we just believe that there is actually no change we can cause, right? This can lead to the creation of the states in various ways. So, and yes, one of the greatest ways I really can be interested in politics is, is through voting. You have to vote. Voting is one of the ways to be interested in politics. Voting is also one of the greatest ways of displaying patriotism. That is, if you do it logically, neutrally, and in a civil manner. Election is approaching now. We shouldn't, we shouldn't let our votes be based off of bribes or misinformation or attachment to a particular political party. Being patriotic, you have to, you have to consider every candidate, then you have to make your research about each one of them. You have to be able to much understand what their own challenges, their achievements, their, with their manifestos, know what they, what they stand for, right? And see if this actually align with your own values as a citizen. That way, you have you would have you have voted logically and neutrally. And also when it's time for election, you shouldn't cause any form of commotion at the at the polling at the polling booths yet. Just just be civil and make just cast a vote and live as an as a normal citizen of Nigeria. Or whatever country it is you are in. And finally, you have to be open with your affection towards your country. It is okay to have a strong feeling towards your country, but this does not preclude tolerance and respect for other nations. Because you love your country, does not mean you should hate other countries. Be open. Once, once you learn new things about your country, do not take them with open eyes. Do not so do not call them first. Ensure you perform research. Do confirm if that needs you have heard is true and see it. So having, having a strong feeling towards your country does not mean you have to, you have to be intolerable, or you have to lose total respect for people in other nations. Total examination of information from the media can also help develop patriotism. You have to examine information that you receive from the media thoroughly. And how do you do that? You have to consider the party reporting. If you hear any news, 
we have to ascertain who stands to benefit from that news. Who do you think is going to benefit from this news the most? And at the other part, who is going to lose the most if this news spread? This can help promote objectivity and receive information and action upon them. I'm just going to throw a question to us. Because we are, as Nigerians, I've been talking about being patriotic, we shouldn't leave our country at all. So the question is, why are we unpatriotic? Why do you think Nigerians are unpatriotic? We have many reasons. If, if you have any answer to this, I would actually love to hear it, please. Do you have anyone who wants to say anything about this before we proceed, before I proceed to talking about the next part of the session? Is anyone with you? Hello? Uh, yes, I'm trying to raise my hand. Um, yeah, but research is raising that I will leave M20 to coordinate the responses. So I, I have been up a number of hands now. Just very right. Yes, Mr. Elias, you can proceed. Okay. All right, thank you very much. I, I think I will go back to the example of Sunday Go that you cited. Nigerians are seen sometimes uh, portraying the appearance of patriotism to sections where they come from. So that when a Yoruba man is seen himself as a Yoruba person, Yoruba man or woman, seen himself as a Yoruba person before thinking of being a Nigerian. Same thing with an Aousa person. Same thing with an, an Igbo uh, person. And Nigeria is not the only country where you either have cross country tribes or in country multiple tribes, and I will I will uh, uh, briefly explain that. So in some countries, you have a situation whereby a tribe cut across so many countries. That's the case with Fulani. When you find them in Nigeria, you find them in Sudan, you find them in so so many countries. Same with in Latin America, when you have like Ayamara communities, when they are nations, but you find them in Peru, Chile, Bol Bolivia, and all. So imagine a Bolivian seeing himself as Ayamara rather than a Bolivian and is connecting with the Ayamaras in Chile and Peru rather than showing or demonstrating patriotism to Bolivia where he comes from. So the same way in Nigeria where we now have a situation where you have multiple tribes and then people are seeing themselves as belonging to those tribes and you know seeking to pay allegiance to those tribes rather than thinking of the bigger picture of Nigeria. So that, that's what I, I think in some cases might be one of the factors. Uh, yes. That... Yes. Okay, so in all you, okay, you mean that tribalism is one of the reasons that most of Nigerians are not a patriotic, if I get your point very clearly. Yes. So yes. you talked more, okay, okay. Mr. Jesse. Okay, um, good evening, everybody, and thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, my battery is actually very low, so I don't know. I might actually go off very soon. So um, my answer to this, why do you think Nigerians are unpatriotic? First of all, I would say there are too many problems that have to make Nigerian unpatriotic, too many of them. They, it is normal of a person to feel, to want to not be cheated. And um, any, any, at any point of someone's life, at any point of human's life, that you see that things are not really working and uh, you, you're seeing that things are not supposed to be the way they are and then you see that there's no democracy you your your voices are not heard no matter how you shout just to the just to deaf ears and a lot of stuff like that now an example is this we are all at home right we are all at home at this moment of our lives as students in nigeria the first thing that will be going through our mind is if i was not in nigeria I would be in school now. If I was not in a Nigerian university, I should be done with my degree course. If I was in Ukraine, oh, sorry, <laughs> if I was in America, if I was in London, if I was in somewhere, right, I would be done with my studies. Things would be going nowhere. So that's one of the first things. Then you just think, God, I, why? Why Nigeria? Why, why am I here? So there are many things, I guess, some of the socioeconomic problems. Many of them, many of them. Insecurity, there are a lot of them that would just make somebody give up on Nigeria, yeah, as a country. So I guess I guess the, the backlog of them, there are too many, too many. Uh, like present thank now, you. you okay, thank you very much. Okay. We have another person that wants to contribute, uh, Mr. Uh, Tai, but can we hear you on why you think most of uh, Nigerians are not patriotic? 
Yeah, um, I think um, one of the major reason is the fact that um, most Nigerian citizens feel neglected. They feel like the leaders are not interested in, in their basic needs and um, they feel um, they feel they are neglected and they are not doing what they, 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 they were actually voted in to do. And that is to, to cater for, for the needs and the affairs of, of, of the citizens at, at large. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. May Sorry, I please? Can you please proceed? May and, I please? Uh, maybe you... One minute, please. Can I, I, I'm not able to raise my hand. I'm sorry. Okay, okay no problem. Okay. Let's say... Thank you very much um, for the presentation so far. So my, my contribution to why I think Nigerians are, are unproductive bothers on what everyone had said, but mainly because my, my thought is Nigerians, a lot of people feel they don't have a stake in the country. So it is a we versus us. And just, it just like, people in government and then the citizens and people they do what they what they what they what they like and like Edime JC had said students are on strike insecurity is there and apart from that in, in, in somebody burned to Nigeria the government does not even know so government does not even know they exist so so to say and it's different from in the, like in, in the situation in other countries where when a child is burned today they got a, they, they've gotten a registration number. The, the local governments, the state government, they are aware of an increase in population, and then um, they make provisions for them to that effect. Um, they give them a, 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 a healthcare, num healthcare number, some benefits as a citizen, passport comes in, and stuff like that. So in Nigeria, you have to fight for everything, and the, the rich gets richer, the poor gets poorer. So it's difficult institution like that to, to actually have put the love of that kind of a nation above your personal interest. And that is what patriotism is all about. It is putting the, the love and, and the interest of the country above yours. But when the country does not even have your interest at heart, how are you able to do that? You understand? I, I can go on and on, but I'll stop now because um, the, the pension has to continue. Thank you. Okay. Very much. I think uh, Mr. Said and Emu can continue yes. in the course of the presentation. We can all uh, see whether it is even true that majority of Nigerians are not patriotic. Because uh, I think it's a notion which may either be true or false. Yes. I personally believe that I'm a patriotic Nigerian, and there are several ways of many people are not patriotic because they feel like we have some socio-economic problems in the country. That does not justify the fact that they should not be patriotic to Nigeria. And like Mr. Said Ariamule earlier mentioned in the course of the presentation, the fact that you are not getting something from the country does not mean that you should not be patriotic. So I leave that to Mr. Said Ariamule to uh, tell us in the course of the presentation uh, before he concludes the, uh, the whole presentation. So he can proceed. Oh, okay, okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Mawashai. And I actually do appreciate everyone's contribution. As the presentation continues, we tend to see the answers to the to this question. And yeah, like my mentor said, is it even true? We're about to find out, I believe. Okay, moving on, we discuss the importance of patriotism. Why should we be patriotic? What are the importance? Yeah, but we have to, patriotism promotes national prosperity, it encourages unity, it promotes tolerance amongst people, it contributes to economic development and it leads to the absence of imperialism. And that is, that means when there is no feeling of nationalism, we all see ourselves as human beings, right? That way, no one would actually feel the need to think, oh, why don't I colonize this country? Why don't I annex this particular country? You know? And finally, patriotism promotes diversity and experimentation. So that concludes the first section of my presentation. Right now, I'm going to move into nation building. What is the definition of nation building? Nation building is a process whereby a society with a shared identity collaborates within the boundaries of the sovereign state to participate in activities that promote progress, 
and development for that state, right? I said earlier that every country is always facing issues. Okay, let me read this. This society, this society may contain individuals with different backgrounds, history, languages, and culture, and activities may include adopting a unified constitutional legal system, developing a national public education system, working towards eradicating the versions and justice of the past, fostering unity, and promoting a countrywide consciousness. I said earlier that the, 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 Not tell you matter where you go or where you go, every country. Yeah, but it's basically so as Nigerians, it is not the the problem is not you know like we can't actually go out. We actually do a lot to go, but I feel like if if we go out there and we learn how things are done there, we can always return to to adopt this system that we have learned over there to see what works over there, and then we can bring that down back here and put it into our system to ensure a functioning and working the working nation. So now we are going to be discussing the role of government in nation building. I guess you should address some of the issues about what is the role of government in nation building. The government has to distribute resources equally. They have to provide education for the people of Nigeria. They have to, or whatever country it is, they have to be strategic in the political relations that they form. Hello? Okay, and they have to reform the distribution of food and aid. Like they have to reform the food and aid distribution systems for the people. So and we notice that all of these things are lacking in our own country, particularly. And I guess that the factors that help to contribute to the to the hospitalism that we tend to see amongst the majority of Nigerians, they would not say most, because we still have very pathetic Nigerians, right? And so how can the youth contribute to nation building and development? How can we as youth find ways to work around these inefficiencies from our government? The first thing is we can create forums and associations that encourage open participation and discussions related to nation building, like CEF has done. This is actually an, a, a very wonderful avenue to discuss activities that we can that we that we feel like can actually contribute to nation building. At the same time, we can engage in these activities rather than discuss them. We can actually do action, we can, inquire, we can engage in them after discussing them. So we can also create channels where they can experiment leading the nation, such as student humanism and youth movements from political parties. So we can engage in, we can decide to form associations in our universities and see, to see, it. we can experiment how things are done at the top there. We can actually adopt that to our own local systems here and practice and experiment to see things are, to see how things are done, to see how effective we're actually going to be if we eventually tend to get there. Because, like they say, these are the leaders of tomorrow, right? So we have to also find ways to these challenges that face us, such as unemployment, poverty, and illiteracy. These are actually the creating employment for themselves. They are developing scalable businesses. They are finding ways to make things work in the country. They are working around the inadequacies of government officials and the inadequacies of politicians, and they are actually getting things to work. So I believe that as citizens of a country, we can actually do all of that also. We can find ways to work around our own deficiencies and all, and we can actually get things to work. Right? And finally, we can it is do, we can participate in government and governance and policy formulation. I said this earlier, we have to be interested in politics. We have to find a way to get engaged, we have to get involved, we have to engage our we have to engage our leaders, right? At the same time, we can rather than engage them, we are we can participate in them, we can run for offices, we can decide to become the chancellor of our community. We can run for local government. I guess the not young to run be was recently passed. These are things we can actually leverage, right? There are opportunities for us, though it might seem difficult at first, right? But if we actually do, if we are interested rather than losing hope, if we, because patriotism is to put the interest of the country above your own interest. So if you believe that there actually a way we can make this work, then I, I feel like the, we actually can do make it work. And yes, we have to think of what we can do for the country rather than what the country can do for us. This is very important. I guess this is why body called us this, but that is not true. Okay, what is the importance of protection to nation building? Where should you be protected? And how does protection actually encourage nation building? First, protection promotes peaceful coexistence. If we all believe that we share a single identity, we tend to live peacefully. We tend to see every person as equal. We tend to apply the rule of law. No one is actually above the law. And we tend to live 
actually by that group. So if anything happens that, that can actually undermine the um, the, um, the perpetuity of that peaceful coexistence, then we are actually always quick to, to shun it, to discourage it and to punish it. Secondly, protesting encourages representing democracy and through voting and all, every person finds, every person actually is interested in the, uh, in the policies of the country and that way everyone is duly represented. Also, protesting promotes self-determination. It also is collective consciousness and it's, the collective consciousness that like we tend to imagine things the same way. We tend to work together. We tend to find solutions to problems that face the country as a as a unit, as um, as a collect in collectively less rather than individually. And yeah, protesting technology is a sense of accountability. To end this presentation, I'm going to be talking about my own conclusion. Right, the topic of protesting national building is one that every citizen, particularly the youth, should participate in. To encourage national development. It helps provide activities that promote peace and unity and those are in diet, even if they are disguised as peace and unity promoting. It also gives a clear direction to everyone on what habit to inculcate and the habits that they can shun. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. With this, I have come to the end of my presentation. Mr. Mr. Mama Said, can you take over now? Thank you. That question, uh, Mr. Said, uh, for that brilliant uh, presentation. I must commend you for the wonderful work. Uh, but at the same time, I think uh, we should allow some other members to contribute before we entertain uh, questions. So if okay. anybody has some vital points relevant to the topic, we can also share our ideas and views. So let's, uh, like I said, do we have maximum of uh, 15 minutes so that uh, means we may not be able to take more than five persons and it should be like three, three minutes each. So for the next 15 minutes, let's hear from uh, members what they have to say about the uh, topic of patriotism and uh, nation building, especially in relation to Nigeria. So uh, I can see some hands have been risen for the past 10 minutes. I don't know whether they see want to talk again or not, but I am aware that Mr. That team APT was trying to talk the other time. Is it still there? Yes, that's story about the Ghanaian. Yes, sir. Okay, um, okay, good please. Okay, good evening. Um, good evening, Mr. Saeed, for that wonderful presentation. It was um so informative and enlightening. So I just want to buttress on one point um, he made towards when he was making his recommendation, where he said um, we should think about what we can actually do by ourselves rather than fully depending on the government. Because the truth is, even in a very sane environment, even in a very sane country, is not everything that the government will actually do for us. Yeah, there are basic necessities that they should provide for us, but we making moves, we making, taking actions that will actually better our own life by ourselves. We we'll actually make the collective efforts that will make the, uh, the country a very better one. So it's not best for us to just be depending on the government to do everything for us every single time. Yeah, there are some things they should do, but there are some things from our own hand that if we can actually implement them as fast as possible and we'll take actions towards them, they, will, they can actually make um, the country a better one. So thank you very much. Thank you very much for that uh, contribution. So may I hear from Victoria, your view about the topic? Are you still there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. OK. So what do you think about the topic? Yeah, I think it's a very good topic. It's a very good topic. Um, I think it's a topic that most Nigerians should be well aware of because a lot of people have lost the spirit of patriotism. A lot of people have lost, a lot of Nigerians have lost that spirit of patriotism. Most of most people don't want to go out. Most people regret they are being born in Nigeria and all. So I think it's a, it's a very good topic. Thank you, sir. Okay, Victoria, before you do, are you saying that if everybody decides to leave the country, it's unpatriotic? 
I'm not saying that if everybody, the, I'm not saying that everybody living in the country is unpatriotic, but the intent behind, most people want to leave and never come back. Most people want to say, okay, they're just leaving. It's different if I'm leaving the country to gain more knowledge and come back to my country and try to build it up. But most people will go there. You'll be seeing newspapers, a Nigerian doing this in the UK, a Nigerian doing this in the, and come here and come and put things back what you've gotten. Most of them won't come. So that's, I'm not saying them, I may wish to go outside to study to do my master's and come back to give back. I think that's basically what I meant. Thank you. Thank you very much for that contribution, Victoria. So can we hear from uh, Nifemi, Nifemi, Chris? Uh, good evening. Yes, good evening. Yeah, so um, about the topic, I think it's a very good one because to be honest, I I don't I don't think I've ever heard youth in this country actually speaking about patriotism. So the fact that we are discussing it uh, this night means that we are actually making good progress. So um, I also like to comment about what Victoria said about people leaving the country. Anna? Okay, proceed. Now we can hear you. Okay, so um, she made the point that um, people live with the intention of never coming back, and that the right thing to do is to go and then come back. But I want to ask, what if people actually take their time, money, and effort to study abroad, and then they come back to Nigeria with nothing to fall back on? Like, what if they come back and then there's no or, or actually, there, there's no, there's no um, incentive, there's no motivation for them to, to actually put their knowledge to use. Someone that, that went abroad to study something that, to study a very, a very technical engineering course, and it's not coming back to Nigeria, where we have no provision for that kind of, um, for that kind of career. I wish to blame that person for being unpatriotic if the person chooses not to come back to Nigeria. I don't think, I don't think it would be fair of us to accuse such a person of being unpatriotic. I actually feel patriotism is all about, um, uh, it's not something so logical, just about our, our emotional side. So as long as we, as long as we don't, we, we love our country, as long as we don't um, badmouth our country, as long as we do things in the interest of our country. As long as we don't do things that we arm our country, I don't think we actually need to live in Nigeria before we can be patriotic. Thank you. Thank you very much. But before you go, I think Mr. Said Aremu mentioned one point about seeing the problems already existing in the country and trying to find solutions to them. So the fact that somebody travels abroad and the person does not want to come back because the institution is not so well uh, positioned to accommodate such kind of persons. Don't you think it is proper for the person to come back and design the best way forward? And that will be part of the ways to build the nation. Or um, okay. Um, sorry, there's this Yoruba adage that says that Tinobanjo Nitonjo Omweni. I think the English tradition is if, if there's a fire burning you and your kid, you first put up the fire on your own body. So now the person that is traveling abroad to study and and then the, and the person should choosing to come back because Nigeria is bad. He wants to he wants to so, hello. That adage you think yes. it is against the spirit of Zim. Because the idea of patriotism and nationalism and says you giving preference to the love of your country, uh, even beyond that of your own interests. So I, I want to believe that that adage is against the spirit of uh, patriotism. Uh, what do you well, think? Well, I, I actually don't I, think I, the I adage is appropriate is in this totally... context. Okay. I mean, how well, um, um, many and any, you understand, and this is the country, you understand, we're talking about uh, uh, your country, whatever country you belong to. So when you say Tinabanjo and Tonjo many, that means you put Nigeria, your country, as in the position of Omo, your, 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 your Omo, you understand. So meanwhile, it should be in the yes. position of your mother, 
you understand so okay. so yeah. tarani la kokko gbe so na je o tell you I'm sorry, the reason I, 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 I use that adage is because I was trying to people who travel abroad and then they don't want to come back. So I, the point I was just trying to make is that I think it would be better for them to actually do some, to actually have a, a stable, a stable, should I say stable job or something? Because I don't think it's fair for them to come back to Nigeria where there's nothing for them. And then the knowledge just goes to waste. So why not just use that knowledge to implement something abroad? And then maybe when things are stable for you, then you can now come down to Nigeria and do something. But then for them to live um, where they are and then come back to Nigeria where they have no hope of actually getting anything done, I don't think that really makes more sense. Barista, can I comment on that, please? Yes. Barista. Thank you, yes. Thank you very much for that contribution. Um, I think for now we should also, and we want to know a bit about the topic and we want to hear from uh, about things on the topic generally before we entertain like one of the questions. Um, Barus, are you there? Is is network is network is probably crappy. M twenty. M twenty. Okay. Um, quickly, I would say something about traveling abroad, coming back to the country, and um is relation to patriotism. One, I am one of the people that hold the a belief that you cannot give what you don't have. And if there is a training somewhere or a knowledge somewhere that you seek and it's not available in your country, Nigeria, then go for it, seek it. Because with if you have the intention of implementing any meaningful changes, and then you need to get that kind of knowledge to that would help you in um, executing whatever changes you, you desire to see. And that is standing on the notion that you probably travel with the aim of um, coming back to the country to give back to the country. But the question is, when do you come back to the country? If you, go to, if you travel abroad to study for a master's degree and you finish your master and you go back to the country, the, how, what is the chance of being able to effect any meaningful change? So it's, it's, it's about the timing, okay? If you do your master's, probably do your PhD, you're established, you, you get a meaningful, you get, you, get, you get some financial and technical know-how, financial way with that technical know-how, and you get known in that particular field, that might be the appropriate time to go back to the country where even the, the top people in that field across the globe already knows you or not across, I mean, in most part of the world already know you. And then that might be the pro a proper time for you to go back to implement any change you desire to see. But for a young person who leaves the country to study for a master's program, goes back home and then go back, get back to Nigeria trying to seek a job, um, a government job or even establishing themselves is it, it might be difficult okay yes we should we should travel we should go wherever we want to go to develop ourselves because it is in developing yourself that you'll be able to help the country um that's you that you love so much and somebody said i mean there is this notion even in same word there is similar problem even in same word if if you have been, if you, if you, if you get to sin word, okay, except when you actually put the interest of the country above your personal interest, if you get to the same words, it is quite difficult living such a society and going back to Nigeria as it is today. But it is my belief that Nigeria can change and Nigeria will change, okay? And it takes the responsibility of all, every one of us to, to, to see that, uh, to see to that change that we, we, we desire in Nigeria. Okay, but the the phrase even in same words, uh, in, even in same words, the the same problem exists and stuff like that might not be totally true because 
yes, they are, they, every country has got their own problems, but there are some things that you don't even talk about again, okay? Imagine leaving Nigeria for two years, about nearly two years, and somebody, somebody, somebody for three, four years, and never have you witnessed a power outage. You understand? So, and that's one of many, many instances of many other things that we can talk about. Even when you establish your own personal business, you, I mean, you pay, you pay bills. We pay bill in Nigeria, you understand? But you, that is not something you are thinking about. Security is not something you are thinking about. Education for your children is not what you are thinking about. So if you if you are if you are giving into the in, into the country if you are if you are if you are establishing your own personal business doing um, some uh, entrepreneurship and stuff like that you know that you are, you get yourself co you, you are covered you understand so that is not that, that is that those are not the things you would, you would bother you worry yourself about again so um, same words when they say same same climbs the same climbs are actually same Nigeria as it is. At the moment is not saying it's not what i'm happy about okay but it is our collective responsibility uh, to see to that to see to that to bring the change that we desire in the, in, in nigeria okay so like i said before uh okay. entering comes back you cannot give what you don't have so if you travel in order to develop yourself for and for and with the intention of coming back to effect that change, then that is okay. That is, and you, you, you whatever you have at, during the process, you keep the love of the country, the interest of the country at heart, then that is fine. Okay. And uh, you talk, I also talk about timing of coming back. Somebody that travels for master's degree and comes back immediately might find it difficult to effect any meaningful change. Okay. It is about the timing. Okay, if you finish your master's, you do a PhD, you establish yourself in the field, you've seen how things work in Sena climbs, and then you come back to effect that change. And then Sena, Sena, Sena climb. Um, why do we why why do we choose this topic? Okay, that's what I want to address. And to, um, before I go to why do we choose any other thing to, 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 to talk about? Talk about? I'm not safe to add that. I apologize for that uh, brief interruption. I had some uh, network issues. So, but uh, I think we should proceed to question and answer if any. So, in the absence of any questions, we can just talk about those things about the part of this. Okay, I have a question for the presenter. Um, whose responsibility is it to imbibe the spirit of patriotism in citizens? Which responsibility do you think it is? I'm sorry, did you say whose responsibility is it? Yes, to, to encourage, to imbibe the spirit of patriotism in, 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 in citizens, Nigeria, America, US, wherever. Wh wh whose responsibility is it? Uh, everyone not tell us their roles to play. I think I mentioned that in my presentation. The government have their roles. They have things they can do that would have encourage this, uh, patriotism in citizens. At the same time, citizens also have the active, their own active roles that can also play that would actually um, promote the spirit of patriotism amongst other citizens, right? So I believe it depends on where you are actually, that will determine the roles that play. But yeah, everyone should, should actively contribute to the development of patriotism in the country. Okay, thank you. So, well, I was, you know, when we say citizens, when, citizens start from the age of um, since you are born you get what i'm saying so and my inference is more like taking the role of promoting patriotism to the family okay because that is the first school of any child and each of us we have we are belong to a family if at our own look uh, at our own cocoon we try we tend to promote patriotism amongst brothers and sisters um, in, in our children if, if you've got a child in our, fa our immediate family extended family we make this a topical issue we make it a responsibility a personal responsibility to make sure that everyone talks about nigeria in good light okay we've got our problems definitely we can't shy away from that but we've also got strengths okay and we should talk more about our strengths as well as much as we talk about our problems our, our impediments our, our drawbacks because what you talk about 
is what usually prevails. And you say something that is very important, the media also has a role. You say, and uh, there, might be a need for, there might be need for a sensor in what, what gets out of the media house. Because if, as, even as an individual, if you're not a media person, if, before you say anything, you have to think about a number of things. Is this necessary? Is this important? Do I have to say it? People have to hear it. What is the consequence of saying this thing? Okay, are you promoting? Are you promoting unity, or are you are you are you are you doing otherwise? Because it goes. You see a lot of things on the on in the media spaces, and you wonder where these people are coming from. There is a guy who lives abroad. He lives, I think, in the UK. And every time he makes a post on Facebook or WhatsApp, whatever he makes, it's this negative post about about Nigeria. Do you believe that he was charged to court in the UK and was jailed for 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 for, for doing things against his country. Just imagine. So he was jailed for that, for that offense because it's more like um, inspiring, inspiring, inciting people against, against the country and seeing everything. And Nigeria has got, has got problem, but that is not the only thing. We have, we have a lot of talent. We have a lot of resources. We have a lot of personalities that we can keep, if we keep picking them one after the other every, every week, every month, we won't, we won't exhaust it. So why don't we also talk about these things. Okay, so, uh, so that, is, that is that. So I think back to the society, we need to, we need our clubs, clubs and societies, family level, we need to make sure that this, we talk about this a lot. And then um, the local, the government, government definitely has a role. Like you said, government needs to pro provide some things. Yeah, you, you think of what you can give to the country and less, and as much as you think of what the country can do to you. But, um, you know, some things are, are this, people need to have a stake in the country. And that takes me to, that will take me to why we, why we have chosen this topic. We are youth. This is a fellowship program. And we are leaders of tomorrow. This is preparing you for leadership. Understanding that this program exists, understanding that and knowing what the problem is and preparing yourself to solve that problem. Okay. We've identified that, um, we've added that tribalism is one of the things that, uh, that make, that cause the problem, um, the problem of, being unpatriotic, how can we how can we solve that problem? Nigeria is not the only country with multiple tribes. Nigeria is not the only multi-diverse um, country. Where there are countries with even more tribes than Nigeria, and they, they, of course they got some problems, but they are able to to amend it. So we need to think about what unites us, what and bring build strength in that, and less of what um, divides us. So and then and and that's why the role of patriotism and encourage the patriotic Nigerians. De definitely, they are patriotic Nigerians. When we say, why are Nigerians unpatriotic? It does not mean all Nigerians are unpatriotic. There are people that throughout their lives, they've, they've devoted their life and everything they have to the country, and they never do anything to, 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 to um, bring shame or anything to the country. And credits to those people, despite the fact that the country barely knows that they exist. That's why the fact that they barely get anything from the country. And, I mean, so kudos to that people. And when we say they barely get anything from the country, Nigeria, of course, there are things that we get from the country. Yes? When you travel abroad, you realize that a lot of things we take for granted, you understand? It, quite a lot of things you take for granted that you get from in your, in your, in your native um, countries. And um, it's only when you travel out that you realize that, oh, so this is, this is actually a blessing, this is actually a grace. We just take them for granted, okay? So, um, we appreciate is that is to appreciate people that are patriotic and try to um, encourage them to keep it up. And um, we hope that um, a time comes where Nigeria be uh, a country of our dreams. Um, to before I cap it up, there was there is when um, during football when England has a match. Do you believe almost all children on the streets were going about with a flag of the of the country? My two year old daughter was in nursery in preschool. They were distributed. They distributed a flag to them to take about to, to bring home. Do, do, do you know what that is? What, what what they are doing to them? That's building the love of the country since the age of two, age of two. And houses you see houses, windows of the houses, flag installed or installed on, on on the street because they have a final international match. You understand? And after the match, I mean, a week or two, you see the people removing the flag and stuff like that. Some people leave it there for months. You understand? And what actually struck me was the children, two-year-old, two-year-old um, child was already canny. And then those that were native in England say, "Oh, England doesn't match. Oh, England!" You, on the street, you see them doing that, and that actually touched my heart. You understand? 
and it, it is it is just we just need to get there okay but we're saying this because we don't know who would get to the position of power in the future among amongst us but this problem exists and there are practical solutions to it that we can that we can um that we can um take from so um well before i will give it back to m to but i think this topic needs to needs a, a wider audience it needs a wider audience definitely uh, uh we are we are barely uh, we are 10 11 15 at the beginning but this is a topic that needs to be repeated maybe at a later time some four five six months and um so that um, we get it to a, a wider audience invite the general public and discuss um this topic of patriotism and nation building again thank you m20 Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much uh, for that uh, contribution and insight. So I don't know whether we have any other question before you next. Um, Sorry, mine, mine, is not a, mine is not a question, it's just a contribution, if it's still permitted. I don't know. Okay, uh, I think I will give you a special uh, assignment. You are going to make a special contribution. So I think I should just restrict you to that. The topic centers uh, around patriotism, uh, nation building. Now, constitution as a legal practitioner, I think we have uh, the Economic objectives of Nigeria, talking about the educational. Oh, yeah. Environment, talking about. Oh. Yes, now the question is most of these provisions in the Constitution that are very good. In fact, I believe if those provisions are implemented, people will think they really have a government because there will be quality provided by the government. There will be uh, a, a, a very robust program for health care for Nigerians. And we are going to have a very unique uh, economic uh, policy don't you think the non justification solution is one of the things that contribute to automatic uh, behaviors or uh, activities that we have in Nigeria at the moment? And what's your view about that generally? And what do you think can be done to further enhance the nation building in Nigeria? Have regard to those provisions and their non enforcement in, uh, in our courts? Oh, okay, Th thank you very much. I think that when those constitutional provisions were designed, they were designed with good intentions, that governments year in, year out, will see those provisions as policy considerations upon which they can deliver benefit to Nigerians across uh, different sections. We copy that from some uh, countries, I think prominently India, but subsequently those countries eventually started to enforce their own and they made it uh, justiciable, but we have not changed our own. And it's a bigger issue of not revising We are losing your voice, please. Uh, you are making very important uh, points. We have lost your voice. We, we cannot hear you again, Barista. Mr. Elias, are you still with us? Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. That it's a problem that those provisions able or expanding the way that the country that we have lived in have, you know, sort of made sure that those provisions developed in their own right. And it's a bigger problem because we have laws that are not revised also, which are usually... In 
amended. The amendment has always been focusing on political offices. Why, how long it will take to conclude the election petition, uh, what it is that you need to hold a particular political office and all. I think that we need to pay more attention to revising those provisions that actually deliver on infrastructure, that actually deliver on how many. It appears we can hear you, sir. We cannot hear you again. Hello, can you hear me now? Yes, much better, much better. Okay, so I think that that's the legal part of the, that's the legal part of the problem, but the more realistic part of the problem is what I can summarize as number one, hope. Number two, emotional connections, emotional part of patriotism. And number three, opportunity. So let's start from hope. Hope is part of what we are doing tonight. So we are gathered here now to discuss again, to give ourselves hope that Nigeria can be better again, that patriotism can pay off, that nation building might take a long time to achieve, but it will still happen. So that even if it takes us 50 years or 70 years or more than that to build, we shouldn't expect that, okay, one day we'll just wake up and Nigeria is just fine. So we need more of those advocates of hope that are able to highlight, as a doctor Ahmed said, that are able to highlight the good part of the things. I say, okay, it's bad, but it's not that bad. There are you know part of this that are good. So they breathe more hope into us to be able to see the positive side. That's the hope part. Then the second part of the emotional connection is the part when you see a two-year-old that went to school. That example that I've also been. I don't want to give more examples because. I think that we've already been provided sufficient examples tonight. So example that they provided us of England having March and people at nursery school went to school and they gave them flags, you know, to, you know, take back home. They are building emotional connections in them, even when they don't have opportunities yet. And it is the same case of a guy who comes to London or goes to America or goes to everywhere, examples that they, they provided us before pursuing master's, PhD, looking for job and all of that, that person may not have opportunity at that time, but it is sufficient if they have the emotional connection that, oh yes, I will think global, but I will apply it Nigeria, like I will apply it locally, you understand? So if I'm looking for problem, uh, solution, uh, so problem solving in access to internet, I would think global, how do we solve access to internet globally? then I will now think, oh, how do I use that global thinking to benefit Nigerians? And that emotional connection to the country. And then the last part is the opportunity. So what opportunity do I have to manifest those things? I'm not a minister. I'm not a lawmaker. I cannot make law. But you find many of Nigerians here, a lot of people that are saying, oh, people travel abroad. You find so many people that travel abroad, but they still have very strong emotional connection to Nigeria even though they don't have that opportunity yet. And they use they utilize the little opportunity they have. And a good example is that you find a Nigerian who is here working really hard day, night, day and night, and then sending peanut that he or she has back home to improve the situation at home. So that's an example of someone who has, you know, very limited opportunity, but they are utilizing that limited opportunity towards the patriotism and nation building. So it means that if that person can continue with the emotional connection they have, the more opportunities they have, the more impact they would then be able to achieve. So they send peanut that they have uh, home, they train people, they try to talk to people, they try to breathe hope into people when they themselves are not in position of power until one day maybe one of them becomes a minister, one of them becomes a commissioner, one of them becomes um, whatever it is, an entrepreneur who has a larger sphere of influence, and then they are able to now use that opportunity to achieve larger impact. But if that emotional connection is lost, by the time they have the opportunity, they will not use it. Uh, 
I'm sorry, you are talking, but you are mute, so we can't hear what you're saying. Stay mute. You need to unmute yourself. Okay, now. now. Okay, I said we should only the part of the is me, and uh, maybe we listen to the recorded version of the of the session motion and send us his own views on the topic generally. Uh, I think this is a very convenient place for us to uh, uh, call it a day. Um, Dr. Mbarak, vote of thanks. Um, Dr. Mbarak, vote of thanks. Uh, what do you guys want? <laughs> I don't even know what to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry. Sorry, I, I was trying to hand over some patients, so I I joined very, very late. So I missed the, and um, I don't know, the uh, chunk of the discussion. But uh, I'm sorry, sorry for coming late, guys. So this is something, like Ahmed has said, that's very important. And um, all the um, um, speakers today, I know everybody knows about patriotism, how important it is to um, any country's development. But it's just so unfortunate that you can't buy your way you understand and you can't buy patriotism yeah you 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 cannot give what you don't have i can remember uh, sometimes last month when me and one of my Ghanaian consultants we were discussing we had this um, nigeria versus ghana um, world cup qualification back and match then it was like he's going to leave the hospital sometimes around 1 p.m so that he can cross over to another highlight where he is, where he does, uh, he does stay with his family to go and watch Ghana match. I was like, what? So because of Ghana match, you're going to undergo so many things like that. Just for him to, to be in another highlight by 4 p.m. and he'll be able to see the match. And it was like, what's my plan? I said, I'm not even interested in seeing anything. And I said, he has, he has noticed that most Nigerians have lost that emotional connection with our country, like that sense of patriotism. That was what he told me. Like, this is just barely a month ago. Now, why is this so? And I told him that it's unfortunate that uh, many of us are here, not because we really want to be here, but sometimes just because we don't have a choice. For me, somebody like me, if Nigeria were to be a very good country, I don't think I would have wanted to leave the country because I was still telling somebody today that I really feel jealous of these whites, of my colleagues working where they were born, working with people that they understand themselves very well, you know, working with the people that they grew up to, together, they went to the same primary school. So it's just so easy to interact with them and all that. So you miss that whenever you come outside, you know. But you don't have a choice because the country is not giving a lot to you. So we could talk about patriotism from now till eternity. We need to fix the basics. If I bet Singh could remember, if a lawyer Elias could remember, most of us are now approaching 30s. Things were not like this when we were young. I could remember some of those songs that we used to sing when we were in primary school. I'm sure the kids of nowadays, they've even forgotten that such uh, songs exist. When I was three years old, four years old, that we were doing our birthdays then, those are the songs. And people made us believe that when you go to school, you know, things will become better for you if you could just manage and, you know, undergo the whole thing. But the country is becoming very hopeless. Let's, let's say the truth. And that is the major driver. You understand? And that's the main thing that is making a lot of people lose interest in the country and people are becoming very unpatriotic. I don't think the little I've spent in my life, which is about parity, I've ever seen Nigeria uh, this hopeless. I've never, I've never experienced such level of hopelessness before. And I think I do appreciate the discussion of patriotism, like we've had it today, but we still need to di discuss more about fixing this country. How do you think, Mr. Chairman, how do you think we board members, we can, on our own part, start thinking about the solution or the ways into fixing the country? Because without fixing the country and making the country work, without preferring solution, or start letting people know that this is something that we can do, I don't think people will really be patriotic. You can't, you can't have a country that doesn't care about the youth. We can't have a country that don't, that don't care about the hood. We don't have the country that, we can't have a country that the leaders 
are so nonchalant the way they do their things and you expect the citizens to be patriotic. I think it's going to be a very, very difficult one. I, I'm sorry, I might be drifting away from what everybody has been saying this night, but I'm just uh, uh, trying to just say things the way exactly I feel, you understand? And the reason why I feel people are really, really unpatriotic. And I don't think I've seen that level of lack of patriotism, like the way we are experiencing now. People, are, everybody is just, look at the way, for example, a good number of our audience here, they are, they are university students. The federal government and HASU, they've been trying to have, let me say, sort of dialogue for like two months, but nothing is happening. Everything you, you, you get to see on the internet every day is one Mr. Emefili picking APC nomination form at on, on, on the million nomination form, this is so called Sulaiman picking another nomination yeah. form. I see the whole country is just about Mark, politics. Yeah. So we, we actually talked a lot about um, this uh, in the beginning, including the including the problem of um, got as a strike, um, people not having the stake, government not doing their part. But we, we've come to a conclusion that yes, government has got a, a bigger role um, from the family setups we need to we need to do something organizations like champions education foundations needs to come in and having this discussion today is one of the way is the, is the starting point okay to uh, to doing that if you realize if everyone understands the the modus operandi of champions education foundation what led to the formation of this um fellowship was an essay competition about um yeah fixing nigeria you understand yeah. So mm -hmm. our first topic was driven towards our first seminar was is towards that second seminar. So, so if you understand the way this is operating, you realize that the main scope is what do we, how do we get Nigeria on track? How do we fix that? And how do we try to, uh, what what role can we play on our from our in our, in our own um, little way? Okay. Um, but honestly, if we keep talking about this and if we keep pouring our hearts, I've said a lot about. Um, you know things not working electricity since some of us have got uh, three years the power there's never been power outage even if you want to be an entrepreneur you know it's, it's a it's a it's a good base ground for that yeah you've got you everything like a disposal like. to go so, yeah i will send the recording of this uh, presentation to the group so that everyone uh, those that are not here today can watch it and then um so those of us here can also listen to it again and like i said we need a bigger audience for this topic and then um we going forward we'll be talking about topical issues on fixing nigeria but we need to talk about what nigeria has got to in the positive light okay and then um and see how we can come in and again like i said we are leaders of tomorrow this topic is just to bring to us that there is a problem and then there are practical solutions so that if any one of us gets to the position of power we'll be able to fix it um yeah so i think about that going forward like you said it's, it's an important topic yeah, sorry, sorry. Let me just chip in yeah. this, please. <laughs> just, just two ways. I won't, I won't, I won't spend a minute here. So, I think going forward, we we might need to have sort of a, a like a draft about the topics that we want to be discussing at the end of the month, so that, like you said, our thought will be uh, gathered in, in 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 a way in which we know that okay, we want to start from this. Then we graduate to this, we graduate to this, we graduate to this, so that at the end of the day, the team will not look at tangential. So I don't know whether at the level of the board meeting, we might have some sort of discussion regarding that, so that we'll have like a topic, like a listed topic and say, okay, this is it, this is it, because we want us to think in this direction. I think that would, that would, that would be better. You understand what I mean? Yeah, yeah, we'll have that discussion at the next board meeting. Um, Dr. Aisha, yeah. can you give us a vote of thanks? Final vote of thanks, please. Dr. Aisha, we've not heard you talk all day. Can you give us a vote of thanks, please, if you are there? If not, uh, Mr. Iba Sarafadin, vote of thanks. Okay, she's there, she's there, she's there. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Hi. Hi. Good evening. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry for joining late. I'm actually at work. Um, I want to thank everybody. It was really a good presentation, really helpful. Yeah, patriotism is what everybody should at least from the family level, like he already said. So we should do this collectively. And I want to thank everybody for attending. I want to thank the presenter and the um, those people that have contributed in one way or the other. Thank you, everyone. 
have a good night. Okay, um, thank you very much. Um, Ari, Mr. Aid, you did a very wonderful job. Thumbs up. I, it's, 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 it's a well-loaded um, discussion. You touched almost every aspect of that. Thank you very much for that. And um, thank you, um, Mohammed Said. You are both Saeeds, one way or the other. Yes, sir. And, <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> and then um, for, for the moderation, <laughs> I, I really do enjoy your moderation. You try to make sure that everybody participated, which was um, quite um, uh, insightful. Thank you. Um, on this note, I will draw a curtain to the discussion. Yeah, sorry, right. can we have can we have sort of feedback arranged? I think that would be okay. Yeah, uh, um, M Twin, can you arrange uh, like a sort of Google form feedback so that uh, we can circulate it among the uh, listeners? You understand? It's in in that case, we'll be able to know those things that people think we could improve on. You understand what I mean? So we could just submit uh, sort of feedback on Google Form and say, okay, what can we do better, et cetera, uh, and well, be able to hear a few I'll, things I'll from I'll leave that to Mubarak. I will spare him to any of that. If you can just design a Google fo uh, Form and just put it on the on the assembly page and then uh, on the fellowship page, let everyone that has attended um, fill it in. I think that yeah, would be nice. Yeah, I, I would have loved to do that, but I, did, I, I just came here like 10 minutes. That's the problem. I don't know what you guys discussed. That's the problem. You understand Patriotism I mean? and nation building. Patriotism and nation building. <laughs> okay, That's I can see your resolution. If you want me to do it, I will get it done. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I will design a group for my Sunday. Yeah, yeah, let's yeah. just send it to the page. Uh, mm -hmm. At least, uh, let's have you um, on. Okay, I'm sorry. Over to you, finally. Night, everyone. Night. I think M twenty has already said we should call it a day. M twenty is yeah, yeah, yeah. It's already twenty two. It's already 